Welcome to Quasar. As far as our opening hand goes, I like it. Uh, we've got one colorless lane though, so that does not sound that good. So let's go ahead and mulligan on this one. And yeah, we'll keep on this one. I like it. That's going to be Underground Sea Soul Ring Talisman. Yes, we will keep on this one. And we have to put one card on the bottom. And I think what we'll do is Frexian Metamorph. I think that sounds okay. So uh, let's go ahead and lead off with Underground Sea. Underground Sea into Soul Ring. Soul Ring into Talisman. <laughs> See if this is good. Anything else? Pass the turn. There we go. Let's have some fun. Uh, we're playing Quasar. Uh, whenever you draw a card, target opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Plank gets Gonti, Lord of Luxury, which we'll cover in just a second. Ooh, there we go. Chromatic Lantern. I dig it. Let's do that. Uh, let's drop in Chromatic Lantern. And that'll give us Esper Sentinel. And uh, opponent's going to go Vampire Tutor in response to that. So we'll see what they're going to grab off of that. Probably going to grab some Fast Mana. I would. Because uh, this is what we got going on. Let's drop in Esper Sentinel. For uh, one white and then anything else, we will pass the turn over to our opponent. Casual two man turn two mana. You know, you know how this goes. Uh, Plank gets Gonti. Uh, Death Touch, whenever Gonti enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of target opponent's library, exile one of them face down, then put the rest on the bottom of, of that library in a random order. Uh, yeah, basically, look at the top four, grab one, rest go on the bottom, and we get to spend our man. They get to spend their manas or any color to cast that spell. So, all right, so we run into Mystic Sanctuary. And then uh, let's see what else. So next turn, we're looking at Quaza, which I do like that. So we'll see what else they can assemble. But um, we are, you know, we could try to get some protection for Quaza. But uh, ooh, no, we do have the double white. Excuse No, we don't have the double white just yet. And we do not have the island. So what we'll do is we're going to go and drop in Mystic Sanctuary. Excuse me. We do have the white for Mana Crypt. And so what we can do is we can Heliod's Intervention instead of going for Quaza, and that puts them only on Gonti for next turn, which I kind of do like. So let's go, that's going to be, yeah, white, white with Underground Sea, and then two with Soul Ring. Yeah, I think we're okay with that. Yeah, let's do that. I, I, I'm good with that. So that does give them a card draw. We're going to click OK, and so it's going to be four. So we tap down white, we tap down white, and that's going to be two from... Uh, Soul Ring, there we go. All right, so they're going to get a card draw uh, from that, and we'll see if they've got an extra land. And then anything else, we're going to swing in for one. Let's go. Go, Esper Sentinel, go. Uh, swing in for one, and then anything else, uh, we will pass the turn. So we did cover both commanders. Let's give a quick shout-out to our sponsors, TCG Player. If you go to bit.ly slash joltmtg, that will apply my affiliate link. Um, that'll allow you to get some cards and help support the channel at the same time. So if you do use that link, much obliged. I certainly appreciate it. Uh, let's give a quick shout-out to uh, MTGO Traders. If you want to play Commander Online, Ink Gaming, last but not least, I started a Patreon. But if you're keeping score at home, it is officially free time, so let's have some fun. So, Ganti did steal something. We don't know what it is, but we'll find out soon enough. All right, so let's go for Quaza. Tap down blue, tap down black. And is there any way that we can set this up and still leave up? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I guess either I was hoping to leave up delay. If we could, do we want to do that? Do we want to thirst for discovery and then try to leave up protection for Quasar? But even if with delay, that's just spot removal that's going to come down at a later point. So let's just do it. Let's just go for Quasar. And if they've got it, they've got it. So we'll tap down white, tap down blue, tap down black. And we'll tap down. We didn't tap down for black. There we go. Tap down for black on that one. And then we'll tap down talisman. Yeah, that'll work out. There we go. All right, so tap down one more. And then anything else, uh, we will pass the turn. Not going to swing it with the Esper Sentinel, and we'll just pass the turn over to our opponent. So uh, for next turn, uh, we are looking at a pull from tomorrow for one, two, three, four, which is, you know, worst things can happen. We do have Thirst of Discovery, which is going to be draw three cards and discard two cards. And so what we'll probably end up doing is uh, leaving that up. So our opponent's going to go for Swift End, and they're actually going to take out uh, Esper Sentinel, which I do like that a lot. So let's see if Gonti's going to swing in. Uh, they got a free swing with Gonti if they wanted to, but they decide not to. So that's going to be a card draw, and that puts us up at uh, 41. So at this point, I'm almost tempted to Mystical Tutor for a... We could Mystical Tutor for a Counterspell, and then we have to Thirst for it, which we can still have that set up. 
So let's do this. Let's just pass the turn because everything that we can do, we can operate at instant speed on our opponent. So the only thing that we'd maybe want to do is try to set up a Thirst for Discovery in our main phase and make the land drop. But I think what we do, I think we just wait. Let's just pass the turn. Let's see what our opponent's got moving over there, and then we'll make some decisions on our opponent's side because we might end up just going pull from tomorrow if we want to, and that still kind of keeps us open on a little bit better for Thirst for Discovery. Uh, we can set up a Mystical Tutor. And we don't necessarily need a Mystical Tutor for a hard counter spare because we still have delay, so we can kind of see uh, what's happening on our opponent's side of the battlefield. But, but yes, we did. We covered everybody. Yeah, it's free time. Now, what are we doing with Quasar? Um, this is card draw control. Um, thirst for discovery different things like that they're gonna go buried alive and do we want to delay that put them into the graveyard we're looking at we can stop on reanimate so yeah that's fine um they're gonna go buried alive if they have reanimate then we might mystical to hooter and kind of counter that so we'll see what that is so they're gonna go buried alive we'll see what's gonna happen uh, but yeah this is esper control you know we're using a lot of the thirst for discovery thirst for knowledge thirst for meaning a lot of ways to just cash in some card draw the other thing that we're doing is using pull from tomorrow um we are running a lot of mana rocks in here i think we are sitting at 37 38 lands in a deck like this in addition to mana rocks and so that allows us to go for a really nice pull from tomorrow and they tap down for one black mana and pass the turn okay so i think what we're going to do on this is see if they end up swinging in kind of want to get some gas going so let's go pull from tomorrow and that's just going to be straight four card draw, or we can Mystical Tutor and make sure that we do have a, another counter spell on top of our library. So let's just do Pull from Tomorrow. I think I like that. It's going to be one, two, tap down, tap down, chrom uh, Chromatic Lantern. Uh, unfortunately, we do have to discard a, a, uh, a card, but I think we're going to be okay. So let's go for four. Pull from Tomorrow for four. Uh, draw X cards, then discard a card. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of... We're sitting on some pretty good artifacts with Tezzeret. And we run into counter spell. That's beautiful. Okay, so let's go ahead and discard Enlightened Tutor. Well, Enlightened Tutor is going to be one of our combo pieces if we want to grab that. So let's actually get rid of Tezzeret. We'll dump Tezzeret. Let's always yield to this trigger. And that was really good, us hitting that uh, that counter spell because that kind of keeps us open on what we want to do. So um, let's see what we draw for the turn. Draw into Cyclonic Rift, okay. And that's going to drop them down to 29 yeah, I think what we still end up doing is just kind of passing the turn. Uh, we saw that Buried Alive. We see Crypt Gas, Runescar Demon, Balthor in the graveyard. So I just kind of want to see what they've got going on their side of the battlefield. So we're just going to pass the turn over there. Uh, but yeah, so we're running draw in here a lot. We saw Pull from Tomorrow. We get more mana rocks, more lands that we're trying to do. Uh, we are running um, the Tezzeret package in here. We've got Tezzeret Master of the Bridge. Uh, we've got Tezzeret Artifice Master. Uh, Tezzeret Betrayer. And there's one more Tezzeret, I think, or maybe that's it. Uh, Tezzeret Agent of Bolas. So we've got some uh, we've got some good Tezzeret stuff. So Ashnod's Altar, I think, with Ashnod's Altar, that's... I think I'm good with that being countered, because I know you can kind of loop some stuff with that, or we're just going to be cool with it right now. Let's try to be okay with that right now. All right, so Ashnod's Altar comes down, and then we still have Thirst for Discovery. We can try to set up an Enlightened Tutor if we want to. But we don't have the other missing piece as far as that goes. So let's go. In step, let's go Thirst for Discovery. Draw three cards and then discard two unless we discard in a, a basic. So we'll see what we rip into. All right, so we run into a few more lands. Uh, let's go and always, and actually with uh, Pure into the Abyss, that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. We're actually one away with Glacial Fortress. That should be it. Uh, so let's go and always yield to these triggers. And uh, we need to discard two cards. We'll get rid of Tezzeret and we'll actually get rid of... Uh, Teferi's Aegis Insight. Let's go and always yield to the Quasar trigger. And I think, I think that's going to be enough with Peer into the Abyss. With them being completely tapped out. Alright, so we lose a card. Uh, we draw a card, they lose a life, we gain a life. Uh, we're running Minecraft combo in here and Thopter Foundry combo in here if you heard that. But I think we've got it with Peer into the Abyss. Um, so let's go. Target player draws cards equal to half the cards. Alright, let's set it up. So it's going to be triple black. That was, a, that was a beautiful ripoff of that. That's going to be one, two. And they tap down uh, Chromatic Lantern. And all they have is Colorless, so we should be good on this one. So Peer into the Abyss. Let's see if this is good. That's going to be a lot of card draw. And this is one, one, one of the fun things about Quasar is Peer into the Abyss is almost, you know, 1v1. It is, uh, <laughs> and look at that. Oh, this is beautiful. All right, so we draw into a bunch of cards. And that should, there we go. Knock our opponent down to 20. Good game on that one. Um, yeah, this is a little bit more of a, with Quasar, this is a little bit more of a combo deck. So, and this is a good showcasing of what we're trying to do. Um, so we got Thopter Foundry in here. That's going to allow us to Dirtle. 
We've got our Tezzerits. Um, there's a lot of times we've got Minecrank, Death Metal, Guild Mage. Uh, we've got a lot of gnarly stuff in here. And then there's also some times where I know this is a 1v1 setting and Peer into the Abyss is basically a one-shot KO uh, with Quasa in 1v1. But you can see where if you're at a multiplayer table, Peer into the Abyss, knock out one player, and then you're trying to set up maybe the Minecrank combo, drain another player, and then stabilize with the Thopter Foundry combo and just keep drawing as the game goes on. You can end up with a pretty wild board state. So anyway, good game to our opponent, a uh, friend of the channel, Guerte. Uh, we hadn't played in a while, so it's very nice to get to play against them. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, hey, like and subscribe. Thanks, bye. Welcome to Quasa. As far as our opening hand goes, yeah, we'll keep on this one. This is not too bad. I, I like that. I'd like to see a little bit of card advantage, but we've got a combo piece in our hand with Minecrank. Uh, we've got a situational counterspell and delay, and we got Snapcaster out of the graveyard, and Heliod's intervention for anything kind of nutty on our opponent's side of the battlefield, and playing against Guerte, playing Prosper. And so I don't know how the videos are going to sequence together. Oh, look at that gamble. <laughs> That's pretty gnarly. I love that. That that looks really good. Some of the stuff, these alt art cards look kind of like when they did the hero, not heroes one, they did the band ones. They, it's hard to see what was going on, but that, that is a beautiful magic card right there. I love that. That looks good. All right. So what are we doing? Uh, let's, let's start. Stop gushing over a card art. Uh, let's drop it in Flooded Strand. I like that. And then anything else, we're going to pass the turn over to our opponents. We're playing Quasar. Uh, whenever you draw a card, target opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Playing against Prosper Tonebound. Uh, Debt Touch, uh, at the beginning of your instep, exile the top card of your library until... And actually, we're just going to go ahead... Well, actually, we'll wait. I was going to crack it and grab a Triome, but we'll, we'll represent some counter magic for our opponent. Um... And let's see. So at the beginning of your instep, exile the top card of your library until the end of your turn. You may play that card. And then for Pack Boon, uh, whenever you play a card from exile, create a treasure token. I promise it's not the first time I've read Prosper. But there we go. All right, let's go see Prosper on the battlefield. Let's go and crack Flooded Strand, grab ourselves a Rafine's Tower, have that come to play tapped, and then uh, kick it over to our opponent. So that's some, uh, that's some pretty gnarly stuff for our opponent. It's going to be Prosper Trigger. And we run into Glacial Fortress, which does come into play on tap because we do have both of those. So let's go Glacial Fortress. Uh, let's go for Thought Vessel. Let's see if they lose a life. Is there any certain way we want to set this up? Yeah, I think we need to go Thought Vessel on this one. So let's go Thought Vessel. We'll get that down and then anything else, uh, we'll pass it over to our opponents. Get their Exile Zone over here so we can keep up with, with, with what is going on. So we did cover both commanders. Let's give a quick shout out to our sponsors, TCG Player. If you go to bit.ly slash joltmtg, that will apply my affiliate link that will allow you to get some cards and help support the channel at the same time. Uh, so if you do use that link, much obliged. I certainly appreciate it. Let's give a quick shout out to uh, MTGO Traders if you want to play Commander online. Uh, let's give a quick shout out to inkgaming.com slash jolt for 10% off of your order. And last but not least, I started a Patreon. So if you'd like to directly support cool content like this, there's a link down in the description below. Uh, but if you're keeping score at home with Quasa in your floating orbs, in your glowing eyes, don't go to the doctor because it is officially free time. So let's have some fun. Our opponent's got uh, off to a very quick start. Now, one of the things with Prosper is I know you can kind of go off with Prosper a lot. <laughs> and so, um, and I don't know the lines with Prosper. So if I'm talking and I don't realize that our opponent's in a loop or whatever, I'm going to try to make sure that, I don't know, we'll see. If we're in a loop and I recognize that we're in a loop, then we'll kind of go from there. All right, so it's going to be Cloudstone. So they can return that back to the hand. That's extra mana. We've got a land drop. That'll be Cloudstone. That'll be Blood Crypt. And we'll see what else. That's going to be Cabal Therapy. See what they name. And I wish I wish we had the rule. For some reason, they used to have um, Pull From... All right, it's opponent named Pull From Tomorrow because they saw that uh, last game. And uh, they get to see what's in our hand. And that's going to be six mana. That's going to be Lion's Eye Diamond. And so what we'll probably end up doing is going Heliod's Intervention. I think on Cloudstone. Because they've got zero cards in the hand. And I kind of like doing that. So let's go and drop in Swamp. Uh, let's go Heliod's Intervention. So we're going to take care of Cloudstone. I guess we can just go Lion's Eye Diamond. Actually, yeah, let's do Lion's Eye Diamond. I like that a little bit better. All right, so we're going to click OK. Uh, let's go for Heliod's Intervention. And if I'm sequencing something wrong against Prosper, I do apologize. But those are the the, the stick-out threats to me. I, I'm not super adverse or super knowledgeable of um, Competitive Commander. And so we'll see what's going on. So, and actually with this deck, I guess technically this is kind of my first delve into, it's I, it's not CDH, I wouldn't call it that. 
this is just combo powered commander right? let's say that so um, let's let's talk about what we've got going so what we're doing with quasa is we're trying to use quasa to just slowly kind of chip away at our opponent's life total um, we've got draw x spells pull from tomorrow stroke of genius different things like that um, we are running two main combos in here we've got mind crank and decimental guild mage um, one of the ways with decimental guild mage is that whenever an opponent um you know once we get that life gain that life loss trigger uh, they mill cards so that's one way with quasa that we can that's one way with quasa that we can get the mind crank trigger combo going without having to have a card enter their graveyard so that's one way we can close the game out so mind crank death mantle guild mage because with mind crank and death mantle what ends up happening is mind crank whenever they lose life they mill that card death mantle guild mage says uh whenever somebody loses life put a card in the graveyard and just creates this nice little happy loop where everybody's really happy um let's go ahead and drop in mystic sanctuary and we've got Tezzeret if we want to. And I think... So that's going to be Twin Flame for a 1-4. Yeah, I, I kind of like getting some Tezzeret going. So let's do that. So let's get Tezzeret. We could try to get Quasar down if we wanted to. We have no follow-up though. Well, we do have a follow-up with Tezzeret and Quasar. And then we can slowly start kind of incrementing after that. I think that sounds like a pretty good plan. Let's actually, let's do that. So let's get, um, let's get Quasar onto the battlefield. Um, they have zero cards in hand, so we don't really have to worry about any sort of... Yeah, let's do that. So let's get Quasar onto the battlefield, because then that leaves us up next turn uh, to be able to go for Tezzeret, get that card advantage going, slowly start chipping away at our opponent's life total, and then leave up Path to Exile, and then we can try to set up a Mind Crank uh, the following turn, and then hopefully that puts us into running into Dust Metal Guild Mage. So I think that works out pretty well. So, But yeah, so we've got Dust Metal Guild Mage in here, so that combo just loops. So as long as you get a life loss, a card in the graveyard, whatever that may be, uh, Quasar helps get that that uh, combo kick started. Um, the other thing that we are running in here is um, Thopter Foundry and Sword of the Meek. Uh, if you don't know about that, with Thopter Foundry, um, that is sacrifice an artifact, create a Thopter. Uh, Sword of the Meek, it goes to the graveyard. It says, hey, whenever a 1-1 one -one enters the battlefield, return Sword of the Meek back to the battlefield. So basically what ends up happening is for every mana. So let's say we have Thor uh, Thopter Foundry, Sword of the Meek on the battlefield. We're going to be able to create five Thopters and gain five lives. So... Nothing too crazy. It's a little bit more of a synergy, I would say. And uh, mainly, just more of a synergy line of play. Alright, so it's going to be a card draw. We're going to drop our opponent down to uh, 29. And we get Tezzeret down. That does leave up Path to Exile. So, uh, let's make the... Actually, let's do this. So let's go Tezzeret first. So it's going to be white, white, black, and then Thought Vessel. Uh, so we get Tezzeret down. And once we get Tezzeret down, that'll still keep us open on Path to Exile. So let's go for the uh, plus one. Draw two cards. And then discard a card unless we discard an artifact card. And we'll get these two triggers on the stack. And I guess what we'll probably end up doing is... I guess we'll discard... Yeah, we'll discard Talisman. So we've got the land drop for the turn. So I like that. All right, so we got Quasar. Get the two Quasar triggers. That's going to be 28 and then 27. Uh, let's make the land drop for the turn. That is going to be Island. And then uh, anything else, we're going to pass the turn. So we're going to leave up Path to Exile. We don't really have to worry about Path to Exile at this point right now, giving them an extra land, because they have a ton of treasure tokens out there. Um, the main thing that I'm going to go and get this out there is, if I sequence Path of Exile wrong in response to like a combo against Prosper, I'm just giving you a heads up that that might happen, uh, in case they go for a combo and I don't recognize it. So that is a misplay that is potentially going to happen in this game, just because... I just don't really play against Prosper a lot, just being honest. So that, that may end up happening, but I'm going to try my best to make sure that it doesn't happen. So, But outside of that, we're in a good spot. we got Tezzeret. We're going to be able to start kind of filtering through some card advantage. Um, we do have Snapcaster on delay. So if we do get to a point to where we can untap with our lands and still leave up Snapcaster, delay, different things like that. And we've got Prosper swinging in at Tezzeret for one. I, we're totally okay with that. Um, we could block with Quasar, we, we would stop it, but just in case there's some sort of lightning bolt from our opponent, we don't we don't want that to happen. So uh, we're going to let that come in because basically it'll just keep Tezzeret at a 4. And we're not really, well, if we can get to that ultimate, that actually does sound like a pretty good plan. So we might end up trying to go for that. Uh, so we'll get Tezzeret going. Yeah, tap down an artifact, draw a card. That We might try to do that. We can hold up Snapcaster as a block if we wanted to. All right, so we run into Godless Shrine. We're hitting our lands. Um, let's go for Tezzeret, and yeah, we'll go for that. Draw two cards, then discard a card, unless you discard an artifact. So we're up on a land for sure, and Limdul's Vault and Catacomb. So let's go and discard uh, two cards, and what we're going to do is get rid of 
we want to make the land drop. So we're going to get rid of Godless Shrine and Limdo Vault puts us into Dust Metal Guild Mage territory very quickly. And so let's go Frantic Search. I'd like to hold on to Frantic Search. We, I guess we could discard Path to Exile, but I like holding on to it. So we're going to get rid of those. Um, always yield to these two triggers. It's going to knock our opponent down to 21. And we're going to drop in Catacombs because that comes into play untapped. And then if we end up getting down Mind Crank, that still keeps us open on Limb Duel's Vault, Path to Exile. Snap if we need to. Yeah. All right. I like that. All right. So we're going to pass the turn. Um, we'll see what's going to end up happening. Now with Mind Crank's on the battlefield, yeah, we're going to Vault for Dust Metal Guild Mage because we can get down Dust Metal Guild Mage. Uh, that puts us at a three activation and we still have just enough mana. We got to see. We got to see how they set it up. Our opponent's going to go, oh, they're going to have a braid. Okay. Do we want to snap, delay, and then still leave a path? Yeah, I think we do. Let's give this a shot. So let's go Snapcaster. Snapcaster. Yeah, I think we want to fight on this one. So let's go Snapcaster uh, on delay. And we're going to delay a braid. And that should give us just enough time to... Uh, yeah, we're going to delay a braid. And then I think we can Limb Duel's Vault during our upkeep. And I don't know if that'll give us just enough mana. So we'll see. All right, so we end up uh, delaying a braid. Let's get a braid pop back up so we can uh, kind of see what's going on. And I know we've got a lot of zones going, so I'm trying to uh, make sure that we keep track of everything with the zone over here. All right, so it's going to be suspend counter off of a braid. So we've got two more turns before that turns into anything. Um, if they have another piece of artifact removal, so be it. But um, if we can vault into Dust Mantle Guild... So we vault into Dust Mantle Guild Mage, get down Dust Mantle Guild Mage, and then we still have a three-mana activation. Yeah, so we can actually do all of that next turn. And we'll see how our opponent wants to set it up. Because one of the nice things about having an active Mind Crank is that you can activate Dust Mantle Guild Mage in response to something. And having that card set up to end up going for that. So we're going to go for Vault during our upkeep. So let's see what this is. So we're going to go Vault. Let's get Vault going. Limdul's Vault. Let's kind of see. Uh, yes, we do want to pay life. Oh, there there it is. All right, put the cards on the bottom in any order. So we are looking for Dust Metal Guildway, Guild Mage. Yes. Put those on the bottom in any order. And I'm going to filter through this real quick until we hit Dust Metal. Oh, dang it. I skipped past it. So we're going to have to, we're going to, have to go back around like on Toy Story. All right, no, we're not going to pay life. So we had to pay extra life on that one. Sorry about that. Uh, let's put um, Polluted... <laughs> let's put Tolarian and Wind. Actually, we'll do this. We'll do Polluted Delta. We'll do Veto. We'll do Hollowed Fountain. Tolari oh, and then Tolarian Wind. Dang it, the zone moved. Okay, this is... We still got Tezzeret to make up for it. All right. So that's going to be a card draw from our opponent. Oh, that is a bummer. We yes, that, that combo could have been executed a little bit better. And that is Mind Crank. They're going to mill that many cards. And uh, and so uh, we go to our main. Let's go for the... Uh, yeah, that was a little bit of a bummer on my part. Uh, let's go for the Tezzeret ability. Draw two cards. We could have executed this combo a lot better. And I don't even know if this combo is going to stick. Um, so let's discard two cards. We'll discard uh, Hollowed Fountain and Tolarian Wind. <laughs> our opponent goes, what happened? And I go, yeah, I skipped through it on that one. So let's go and always yield to these triggers. Uh, let's get down Dust Mantle Guild Mage. And then, yeah, we had, to, we had to skip around like toys. Yeah, and see, this is where we, if we had Dust Mantle down, we could activate in response to that. So, and then that's going to lose one life. They gain a life. Let's go and always yield to that. Um, let's go for Dust Mantle Guild Mage. All right, so now we're getting down Dust Mantle Guild Mage. And what we can do on this one is we're just going to wait for any sort of action in response to that. So um, let's go ahead and swing in Quaza and Snapcaster. Because once we get that trigger going, uh, we'll be in a good spot. So let's go and push in with Quaza, pa uh, push in with Snapcaster. Yeah, a little bit of a goof up. I accidentally double clicked on Limb Duel's Vault, and then we could have set it up to where Dust Mantle was directly on top of our library. And then I accidentally, the zone changed at the last second, and I clicked on it. So a little bit of a uh, little bit of a misplay on that one. So all right, opponent's gonna go Emergent Zone, crack, K. Okay. And what was that? What was the emergent zone? You may cast spells as though they had flash. Okay, so let's see what this is going to be. That is going to be Simeon Spirit Guide. <laughs> we got Simeon Spirit Guide entering the battlefield. Let's see how they decide to block on this one. Um, either way, we're going to wait until that Dust Metal Guild Mage trigger gets on the stack. Um, so let's do this. So in response to that, let's go Dust Metal Guild Mage whenever a card is put into a graveyard. Uh, that is going to be black, blue, and then Thought Vessel. 
and that's going to be there we go so yes the the landing for this combo if it does stick if they've got spot removal for mind crank they've got it if they have spot removal for dust metal guild mage it's not going to matter because we've got this trigger on the stack and that, that's what matters so um once simian spirit guide goes down into the graveyard that's going to be at life loss and we'll return quasar back to the command zone uh, let's always yield to this uh, dust metal guild mage trigger and let's always yield to the mind crank trigger there we go look at that good game to our opponent and we're going to get the loop going. So you can see what with Quaza, we could have gotten the loop going with Quaza if we just draw into Dust Mantle. Uh, but unfortunately, the way I sequenced it, we're able to get it in with combat damage because all you need is a card going into the graveyard. So good game to our opponent. We're able to get it on that one. Um, but yeah, this is a showcase of what we're trying to do with Quaza. You know, we don't have to get that combat swing in uh, with Quaza. If we just get that card draw ability, uh, then we're good to go. But uh, but yeah, I'm digging the way uh, Quaza is turning out. So anyways, if you enjoyed the video, hey, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.